Awesome. So I think we're recording here. What is up, Sales Dev Squad? Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of the Sales Dev Squad podcast. We got a super special guest for you today, one of my personal favorite authors. Uh, he's the author of the famous book, Smart Calling, Mr. Art Sobchak. I actually read this book when I started my first cold call heavy SDR role uh, for a cold outbound SDR role. And boy, was this book helpful. I uh, learned a lot about handling objections, how to take a tailored approach when doing cold calls so that they're not cold anymore. So uh, what an honor to have you on the podcast today, Art. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, thank you so much for having me on. It, it's an honor and a uh, privilege to speak to your audience. <laughs> Thanks, Art. Well, let's just go ahead and dive in here. Um, I guess for our viewers out there that have constantly taken a cold approach to calling, I guess uh, prior to maybe reading Smart Calling, have we been taking like a dumb calling approach? I'd love to just hear your thoughts on like what the difference is in today's world, like what defines a smart call versus like a cold call, I guess. Sure. Well, it, it, I think cold calls have been the same forever. And a cold call I define as calling somebody that you don't know, who doesn't know you, who wasn't expecting your call. And we're, we really don't know anything about them. And we're giving them the same pitch that we gave to the five people before and the five people after, if we're even able to get them on the phone. And there is absolutely no reason today to place a cold call because we have more information available to us than at any point in history. And that changes daily because we have more information available and we can, we can do that pretty quickly. So a smart call is really pretty simple. It's knowing something about the people and the organizations and the situations that we're calling into. And then we're modifying and tailoring and personalizing our approach and our value messaging so that it is focused on that individual and what's going on right at this time so that we can resonate with them. And really, it's even more important today than ever to our success because if you think about it, I mean, how many messages do you think people are inundated with every day? Uh, I mean, I did some research on this and I saw numbers ranging from 500 to several thousand messages of all types that we're exposed to. And of course, people can only re reply or respond or even read a fraction of those. And I mean, if someone is lucky, we're probably only going to reply to two or three things that uh, people want us to reply to over the course of a day. So in order to do that successfully, we've got to make our messaging all about the most important person in the world to that person. And that's them, right? <laughs> I love it. Um, I guess like in your opinion, Art, where do you where do you sort of see the phone as a vessel or a channel to um, to make sales in today's world? Uh, I guess if we sort of obviously like there's a lot of um, thought leaders out there that are mentioning like, you know, cold calling is dying. The phone is dying. It's all email. It's all digital. I'd love to just hear your thoughts. Like where do you see the phone or, or the a call as being like a, a vessel to make successful conversions in sales? Well, having, having been in the inside sales business my entire business career, which is over 35 years now, uh, and <clears throat> when I started out, it was called telemarketing, and that was not a bad word because it was done in, in a business-to-business -business sense. Then it changed to telesales, then it changed to inside sales, and now we're calling it different things, remote sales or, or digital sales, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. The phone is still the most effective way to communicate with another human aside from being face to face. And I guess what we can slip in, in between there now is, of course, what we're doing. And that's, that's having a video communication, which uh, I, I suggest that people use in conjunction with their smart calling both a personalized video sent in an email or an in-mail or a text, but then uh, also if, if, we, if you can get somebody to hop on a call like this with video, if they're comfortable with it. Now, of course, many people have been forced to do that. That's also an effective way. But aside from that, Again, still many people don't want to do a video because of their hair, their makeup, or, you know, just <laughs> don't like the way they look. The phone is still the most effective way. And what's happened, uh, 
unfortunately, the pandemic hit us, but fortunately, many people are realizing that I can pick up the phone, have a conversation, and, and do business and, and actually sell. And I think people got away from that. And in talking to a, a bunch of sales leaders over the past couple months, uh, unfortunately, the ones who had to let some sales reps go, the ones they let go were the ones that couldn't pick up the phone and have a conversation because they relied on being a keyboard jockey and trying to initiate conversations that way. And in, in this environment, companies relied on having conversations and generating revenue. So uh, it, it hasn't gone away for the people that, that have used it successfully and, and it's not going to go away. And I think it's only gonna be more important. And by the way, anybody that says that something is dead, I just have to laugh at them because I can just point to all the hundreds of thousands of people that are doing it successfully. That's awesome, Art. I guess, um, could you maybe walk us through uh, maybe like a use case or an example, uh, maybe like targeting a director of sales, for example, like what sort of uh, little pieces of information would you perhaps gather prior to, you know, placing a smart call, I guess you could say. Sure. Well, this one is easy because this is what I do and probably what you guys do as well as, as a training company. And the smart calling process is first identifying what, what is my possible value to my targeted audience. And actually, let me, let me back up. Who is my targeted audience? Well, in, in my case, in your case probably as well, it's sales leaders, VP of sales, uh, sales directors, and so on. People who are responsible for managing a team and, uh, and, and, and coaching and hiring and uh, hitting a number right and developing their people so what are they looking for if, if they're doing any type of prospecting what they want to do is be able to provide a process and methodology and uh, ongoing training and for many people at least the ones I've worked with over the past 30 years not having to do it all themselves and it gets provide something to their reps that's going to provide proven results and so I'm also looking for people who fit the profile of having the need. The need being they're, they're doing outbound, they're doing outreach now. Maybe they're not doing it as well as they like, or maybe they're doing it pretty well, but they wanna make sure that they're continually you know, sharpening the saw and, and getting better. And I found that those have been my best clients over the years because it's a lot easier to get somebody to uh, work at being better than to try to adopt something new. Excuse mm -hmm. me. So uh, whenever I do training, we always go through that process first. And then we try to identify what's going on in that prospect's world. What do they want? What do they not want? And really trying to understand who, who are they? Because too much training starts with, here's the product, here's the feature, here's the benefit. And you know, people start memorizing that crap. <laughs> and <laughs> what we have to start with is, who, who are we talking to? Let's start with the customer. Then we get into, okay, what do I have that's going to help them? And I won't go through all the stuff that I have. But then my process is this. Let's say I'm going to be calling. I've got somebody very specifically I'm going to call. How did I find them in the first place? Well, maybe I got a bad call from an inside sales rep. And then I actually, what I did with them is I probably asked them some questions. I did some social engineering with them. But let's say I didn't get the call. Maybe I was just doing some prospecting. I, I saw that in a news article, one organization had a uh, large uh, sales staff and maybe it's somebody I wanted to work with simply because they were in an industry that I found attractive. Let's take a sports team, for example. Right. And so then what I did was I just started doing research. So I'll go online and uh, I'll, I'll go to a lot of different places. I actually have partnered up with Sam Richter. I don't know if you know him, but Sam is uh, probably the number one wizard in the world on using uh, Google and all the other search engines to collect sales intelligence. And we actually partnered on, um, he's got a, a sales intel search engine and we can cut down our, our search time dramatically and get some incredible information. So anyway, I'm, I'm gonna do some searches to find out some things about the company, their sales department. Uh, I'm gonna look at uh, employment ads to see if they're hiring people and I'm gonna look for the terms cold calling if they, if they are. I am going to, uh, 
do some searches on my targeted prospect. Of course, I'm going to go to LinkedIn. I want to find out things about him or her professionally as well as personally because people still buy from humans, right? And I'm going to see whatever other news that I can find about what, what's going on with that company in general. But now I want to get more specific information about what's going on inside the sales department. And the, the way I do that is through, you, you read the book, social engineering, right? Social engineering, by definition, is simply calling into a company and asking questions of somebody other than a decision maker to get good information. Social engineering was originally popularized by computer hackers who, of course, would just call in and try to hack <laughs> into a computer system and they would misrepresent who they were, but we're going to give full representation. And when I call into a sales department, I here's the social engineering process. It's simply, hi, art subject here with a business by phone. First of all, I'm, I'm, I'm not a prospect for you, but what I have is potentially going to help you. I'm gonna be speaking to your director of sales, uh, John Smith, and uh, before I do, I really like your help. I wanna make sure I'm prepared when I speak with him. There's probably some information you could help me with. And uh, now I'm just going to ask you questions. I'm gonna ask questions about, well, tell me. So I understand you guys are doing prospecting. Tell me about that. Very open-ended question, right? And we'll see where they're gonna go with it. You know, they might go, oh, well, let me tell you, here's what we do and it you know, really sucks and you know, we're not getting any training. Or yeah, yeah, we're doing it when we can fit it in. So I'm gonna ask all kinds of questions. And really what I'm looking for here are, are gaps, particularly as it relates to where they could get better, training that they have now, um, if they're hitting their numbers or not, and if they're not, what that means to them in terms of numbers. So I wanna dollarize the problem. Um, also, again, wanna find out about the morale. What, what is it? I mean, is it something that they're just forced to do? Is it a numbers game? And, uh, you know, what, and I'll ask them, what, what, what are you saying on your calls? And now armed with all of this, then I'm prepared to tailor my message to the decision maker. And what I'm going to do in my opening statement process or voicemail process, because really they're the same, is I'm gonna start out, identify myself, then I'm gonna have a connection. The connection being, I understand that your sales team has a new business quota here for new logos for uh, 2020. And speaking with one of your sales reps, I understand that uh, because of the pandemic and some other issues, you're probably gonna follow up short. And uh, also understand that uh, the, the reps really aren't where they'd like to be as far as getting response on, on their calls. Well, what I do is specialize in working with sales teams like yourself who have that new business quota you, and help them to use a proven process that's been used by hundreds of thousands of salespeople to get through, get in and sell and do it without rejection. And uh, what I'd like to do is simply ask you a couple questions, see if what I have might be of some value to you. I love that. I love how it's 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 all strategic. Uh, you didn't you didn't find that success just on the twentieth dial. It, it it took a little bit of work before and after, but uh, I love how it's all engineered and tailored uh, specifically to a T. Um, yeah, it wasn't the first time I said that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I guess like I, I've, I've definitely felt it, um, you know, cold call reluctance or just the fear of failure, um, which is obviously pretty common, especially in the SDR field. Um, how can reps build more confidence when taking approaches? Maybe just, again, getting rid of their mindset of a cold call and, and, and taking this uh, smart call approach. Yeah, I mean, to unpack this, there's actually several different components to this. One is, I mean, you talked about how, how can you build confidence? Well, confidence comes from competence, okay? And we acquire competence through what? Acquiring knowledge, putting in the work, practicing, and then going live, and then learning from our mistakes, and then rinse and repeat and, and continue that. Because if you think about anything that anybody is good at and everybody is excellent at something, you probably put some time in, you probably did some studying, and you probably learned as you went, you had a passion for it. Because nobody is just a natural, a born salesperson. Granted, some people might have some personality characteristics and communication skills that might make them, might make it a little bit easier for them to excel at this. Mm -hmm. But I've yet to meet 
an outstanding and wealthy salesperson who hasn't put in the work, okay? And sometimes people will say, well, geez, you make it sound so easy. You make it sound smooth. Well, in order to be smooth, you got to be unsmooth first, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're a golfer, but if you, if you want to golf in the 80s, you normally got to go through the 90s first. If you're going to golf <laughs> in the 70s, you got to go through the 80s. It's not like all of a sudden I'm going to pick up the club and I'm going to start doing trick shots and shooting mm -hmm. under par. Uh, it doesn't happen that way. So, so confidence comes from competence. Now, I'm glad you asked about mindset because most everything I teach is the mechanics. The smart calling process, these are the mechanics. These are the words to use. I can take somebody off the street and we can get them to memorize the mechanics, but they're going to fail miserably unless they've got the mindset for being able to deal with the experiences that we inevitably face when we pick up the phone. Notice I said experiences, uh, AKA for some people, rejection. And, and the subtitle of the book is Eliminate the Fear of Failure and Rejection from Cold Calling. So over the past 10 years since that's been out, people have said, how in the world can you say that? That's BS because rejection is just inherent in, in prospecting. Well, I, then I challenge them and I'll say, okay, if you've been rejected before, how do you know? And of course, you know, what, what do you think the answers are to that? I don't know. <laughs> I got a no, right? I got, I got hung up on. Uh, they told me yeah. not to call anymore. Take me off your list. We're all set. All the things that <laughs> we've all heard thousands of times, right? And then I'll say, okay, now, is, wh what, what was that? What did you just describe for me? Those are experiences, right? Now, is rejection an experience or the way you define the experience? Mm. And it's always your definition. It's never the experience itself, mm. because uh, one of my one of my mindset mentors, a guy named Jim Fortin, says that nothing has meaning until I give it meaning, and that's true for everything in life. I mean, from the guy that cuts you off in traffic to a dog walking across the street, none of that has meaning until you attach a meaning to it. And the same thing is true with everything that happens to us on the phone. So if we have a choice to tell ourselves a story. Why would we tell ourselves a story that I just got rejected? You may as well just say to yourself after a call, I suck. <laughs> and if you tell yourself that enough, you're probably going to stop placing calls. And people do. You probably experienced that, right? Oh, so absolutely. what should we do instead? Well, one, quit telling yourself a story about, oh, I got rejected. But more important, some people might say, well, those are just words. Absolutely, those are words because our, our actions and our emotions are going to follow our words and, and our thinking. So what the stories we tell ourselves are, are really pretty important. But then I suggest that we do something proactive on our calls so that we can feel good about what we're doing. And, and by the way, that is so important because in our profession, this is a profession more so than any other where our success really is determined by how we feel when we're doing it. Because, you know, accountants can come in and feel like crap and probably still put out a, a good spreadsheet. But, um, I mean, we really can't do that, right? I know. I've tried. No. <laughs> so, um, so how about going for a win, something that we can attempt, not even necessarily accomplish? I mean, a question that we could ask. Maybe it could be just leaving them with a good feeling of us at the end of the call. And I call that a secondary objective. And here's why. Because now at the end of a long day, instead of saying, oh, I got rejected 40 times, can't wait to do it again tomorrow, <laughs> we can say, hey, I accomplished my primary objective four times. I set four good qualified appointments. And the rest of the time, I accomplished my secondary objective. Pretty good day. And that's how we can keep our attitude up and therefore continue to put in the activity that is required to get the action or to get the results that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. I love that. I guess like in your opinion, how important is it to have sort of like that positive uplifting mindset, uh, especially if it's very, if you're, you're getting tons of rejection, being able to look past that and say, okay, even though I wasn't able to book a meeting, I was able to find success here. Like how important do you think it is to just celebrate those micro wins? It is absolutely critical, not just important, it's essential. Because if we don't, again, we will just, human nature, it's going to pull us down. It's going to pull our attitude down. And we've all known people like that. And there might be some people out there listening to this where that's the feeling that you have. But you know what? 
you can change that right now. You can change that instantly because all you got to do is just change the story that you're telling yourself. If, and that's one thing you can control. Here's what we can't control. We can't control what's going on in the world of the person that we're calling. And we can't necessarily control how they're going to react to what we say. We, we hopefully can influence it by saying the right things that hopefully will elicit the response we want, but we can't control that. Here's what we can control. We can control what we're thinking and we can control our activity and the process. And when we do that, the results are going to follow. I'm from Nebraska originally, and the legendary coach, Tom Osborne, who won five national championships, was just an amazing guy, and, and he was a uh, PhD, a doctor of uh, psychology. And he said that it's not about all about winning. He said, it's about the process. And he said, I focus on the process and the people. And, and when I do, if we do the right things, the results are going to follow. And, and they did. And uh, of course, there are a lot of people in Nebraska that would argue that that winning actually is pretty important. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, Art, what was the inspiration for writing Smart Calling? Obviously, you're going to be launching or you've already launched the third edition uh, this week, which I'm excited to, to take a look at that and, and push that out as well. But uh, like, what was the inspiration for you, um, you know, creating what I believe is one of the most fundamental sales books I've ever read? Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Well, the inspiration was I had been teaching that process for years and never really attached the title Smart Calling to it. And I go back and look at my material from I mean, even 20 years ago. I was teaching social engineering, doing the research, tailoring your opening, and so on. And I had self-published five of my own books up to that point, and uh, I think eight for some other sales authors. So I actually was a, a publishing company in addition to a, a training company. And over the years, I had received numerous requests from publishing major publishers to, to do a book for them. And I always turned them down because as a publishing company, I was making about 90% margin. And as a publishing company, they mm -hmm. wanted to give me about 7 to 12% royalty. Mm -hmm. And I always thought, well, no, no I'm, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> and the interesting thing about book publishers is that they turned down thousands of submissions a year from wannabe authors because they're looking for people who can sell books, not people who can write books. And uh, so match. about 11 years ago, I was approached by a, they, they call themselves an editor, but it was actually a business development rep who contacted me and said that I see on Amazon, you're, you, I mean, you're pretty popular. You sell a lot of books. Would you be interested in writing a book for us? And at that time, in the back of my mind, I had considered, I had already come up with the title, Smart Calling, and I thought I was going to do that book myself. And now I'm thinking, maybe it might be better if I go with a major publisher, because the, the main benefit of that is it's going to get you into the major bookstores, of which there are fewer today than there were then. <laughs> and uh, it, it, it was going to get greater exposure, at least initially, because most business books die on the vine after a couple of years. And I thought, you know, what the heck, I'm, I'm going to do this. It's going to be a great opportunity to, to really blow up that brand. And, uh, and that's what happened. We, we went out, we hit number one on the very first day. It was out in the sales category on Amazon, stayed there about a month. It continued to sell well. Uh, they wanted me to do another book. I did a, a second edition about three years later. And now here we are seven years after that one. And I approached them because not because the process has changed, because the process really hasn't changed. Some of the technology has changed, including the way we connect on LinkedIn and social media and, and using video. But also what has changed is that I've got hundreds and hundreds of success stories and tips and best practices from people like yourself out in the field who've been using this process and, and changing up the wording and putting it in, in their own words and having tremendous success with it. And, and uh, I mean, making people wealthy, the stories that I've heard are, are just so gratifying because they completely changed the way that, that they prospect and now they're getting better results. So that's why I wanted to do the, the third edition. So there, there's a real long answer to a short question. <laughs> no, I love it. I'm just always curious because it is a phenomenal book. 
I remember one of my sales managers was like, Hey, like I read this book way back when, and like, it's still applicable today. And I think that's, you don't really find that too often. So, um, Art, I always like to end up the podcast here with, uh, just if you could provide any tips for any SDRs or BDRs out there that are, you know, looking for their next opportunity or looking to land their first sales opportunity after being inspired by reading this book or the podcast here, uh, what advice do you have for them? Just to clarify, you're talking about somebody who's looking for an opportunity, looking for an SDR sales rep role with, yeah. within a company, right? Exactly. Yeah. Perfect. This is the same advice that I've given to hundreds of sales reps over the years. And the thing is, is that you can use the smart calling process to create a position for yourself nice. or get hired within an existing position in a company. Because if you think about it, sales managers and sales leaders are always looking for people who can do what, who are excellent at their craft. And what better product to sell than yourself? And if you can follow the smart calling process, and here's how somebody should do it if they're looking for a position, identify who it is you want to look for, or excuse me, who you want to work for. Mm -hmm. I would suggest you find something that you're extremely interested in, something you're passionate about, maybe something you know a lot about, something where it would just be such a joy to come into work every day, because I firmly believe that you've got to, you've got to have such faith in the value that your product or service delivers that you feel you should be charging more for it. Because if you don't, I mean, how are you going to be able to deal with price mm -hmm. resistance, right? So identify that. Then you go through the process, start doing the research. And so you're looking up the company online, but then very importantly, do the social engineering. Call into the sales department and follow the social engineering process. Hey, um, my name is Pete Smith. I'm hoping you can help me. Actually, the reason for the call, this might seem a little unusual, is that I'm actually looking to do what, what you do there at, at your company. I'm fascinated and I love your product and so on. I'd like to, I hope you, hope you can help me. I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. Then I'm gonna ask them all kinds of questions about what's it like to work there? What kind of training? How'd they get hired? Uh, you know, compensation, you, tell me about the manager, anything and everything. And also want to find out you know, what, what do they look for in sales reps? Then I got all this information. I'm going to tailor my opening statement <laughs> and whatever approach I have to that sales director. I may send something in advance, um, you know, whatever that might be. I would suggest people read, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Stu Hynek. Stu Hynek wrote the books, um, How to Get a Meeting with Anyone and Get the Meeting. He's a big believer in contact marketing, which is sending something unusual in advance of your, uh, or as part of your outreach. Like in my case, I'll send a copy of Smart Calling. So I have, I have an advantage there. <laughs> um, so then what we're doing is you can figure out whatever your cadence might be. If you want to send an email first or an in mail or connect on LinkedIn, what I would probably do is I would start liking some of their comments on uh, LinkedIn, maybe commenting. So my name isn't, um, so my name is a little bit familiar by the time I do reach out and uh, then I'm going to do my reach out and I'm going to make sure that I tailor my possible value proposition to exactly what that sales leader is looking for. And the goal of that is to, of course, ask a few questions and get an interview. I wouldn't send a resume. To me, re resumes are, are a joke. Um, I mean, they're just pieces of paper. People see thousands of those. Yeah. Sales leaders are looking for somebody that can sell. And if you're demonstrating that you can sell, and again, I've had so many salespeople tell me they followed this process, and I've had so many sales managers tell me that they've had sales reps who followed that process, and it was a slam dunk them that's awesome i love how it's literally applicable to to any anything and everything that we do in my opinion so thank you for that helpful uh feedback art i guess for anyone out there that would like to purchase the third edition of the book or you know reach out to you for like sales training um i guess where can they find you in your book well, the book has its own page, which is smart-calling.com, smart-calling.com. And the reason we have that set up is that you, you can buy the book there from whomever you'd like, Amazon, or you know, there's a lot of other vendors. But then what you do after you buy the book, go back to that page, and I've got another button where we have a companion resource training. Um, it's online and for every chapter in the book, I've got additional stuff. I've got audios, videos, scripts, webinars, nice. interviews with other sales leaders. And uh, if I had a charge for that, it would easily be a couple hundred bucks. So you get that free just by buying the book. Now, if you like to contact me personally, 
the other site to go to is just smart calling all one word smartcalling.com and there's a lot of different ways you can get in contact with me there you can see my training information and and so on plus there's a lot of free stuff there as well and uh, let me compliment you Mateo, on what you guys are doing there because i believe that young people obviously are the future of professional sales and and sometimes uh, the younger generation gets a bad rap from from people like me not me but but people like me who are going uh, yeah, when i was here I, I know, get off my lawn right and you guys are absolutely going to be the future and i am absolutely amazed by some of the the people your age out there who are absolutely crushing it and uh, I've, I've got complete faith in you guys that you guys are going to uh, help help the economy come out of, of what we're in right now and you continue to just go out there and just rock it would it be possible without reading smart calling art <laughs> of course it would be possible <laughs> but this is going to help you do it more quickly awesome art well thank you so much for being a phenomenal guest sales dev squad hope you guys enjoyed this episode and we'll catch you guys on the next one